have been making content on FIFA since FIFA 13, and only once have I made a rebuild on Fulham. Are you serious right now, bro? Disgraceful. How dare I? We need to change that right now as we speak. We're going to be taking on Fulham, a club that only has won trophies in the third division of England, the second division of England, but never in the top division and never on the European stage. So for that reason, we're going to be taking on this club that is currently sat in 12th, right behind Chelsea on 38 points. But lately, I've been popping up with some really good results. Rodrigo Muniz, the striker, has been doing wonders for this side, getting seven goals in seven games, I believe. And they beat Tottenham 3-0 at home, which is very impressive. Everyone thought that Fulham was going to lose that game. And today, because this team doesn't have any major trophies, I'm giving myself the target of winning at least five major trophies with Fulham. And then we'll see how far we can get. For far too long, Fulham had to rely on the service of Alexander Mitrovic, who obviously had done incredible things in the second division at times in the Premier League as well. But right now... They wanted to rely on Jimenez at first, who they signed from Wolves. And they also have Broja here, who is a very talented player, by the way. Still 21 years old. Has shown glimpses of brilliance at times, but obviously at Chelsea, it feels like anyone can fail. So we have Rodrigo Muniz up top, and this guy has been ridiculous for the team. He has risen from basically the bottom of the top scorers at Fulham to the top position within seven games. He has seven goals. After that, it's the Cordova Reed with five goals. And then it's Jimenez with five. And then it's Ivobi with five. Now, one of the players that has been impressing me a lot this season has been Anthony Robertson. He has been unreal. Not Robertson, Robinson. 25 years old, left-footed, has been getting assists, has been doing wonders for this team. So much love to that man. We need to keep him in the club for as long as we can. He could still you know, make a big move in his career. If he keeps going like this, definitely a lot of teams are going to be interested in him. And then obviously we have Palinha here, who I personally as a Bayern fan desperately wanted to see signed. He was even there. He held up the shirt and everything. You could see him at the medical checks. And at the end of the day, it didn't work out. And I now wonder what's going to happen with Palinha. Is anyone going to be signing him? Any of the big clubs that still need a proper six? Are they going to go for him? Or do they feel like... A 27, 28 year old is too old by now and he's not fast enough to really play in those types of big teams. A lot of questions surrounding a couple of these players right here, but we'll be making some big decisions. And you know what? I kind of feel like I want to play a two striker formation because I already had Muniz in one of our previous rebuilds. I think Sevilla it was where I desperately wanted to sign him. So I definitely want to have another man next to him to get things done but yeah let's get this rebuild started let's get the party started let's get the party started looking into the recent starting 11s for fulham i realized that diop and tete are not getting as much play time it's a center back pairing of bassi and Ad adaraboyo ah, bro let me read the name again what the hell is his name adaraboyo i will struggle with that ada that's your name Ada and Bassi are playing in that centre-back position lately. So I decided to let go of Diop. Tete is not playing because Castagna is playing in that right-back position. I believe that's a former Leicester City player. But uh, that seems to be the lineup that Fulham have run in the past. Now, after those sales, we are looking at $63 million to spend. And as I said, I need to find a two-striker formation and then find out which striker I actually want up top. Because Broja, I've just read, he's actually going back to Chelsea in June. And they have to pay Chelsea like four million because he didn't play as many games as they expected. Really odd one. There is a man in Argentina that in his last six games managed to pick up five goal contributions. This is probably someone that most people don't know of and have never used in their game, which is going to make this a very, very fun transfer. This man's name is Luciano Gondu from Argentinos Juniors. This man is going to be our new striker. He has been crushing it for his team lately. And I felt like this could be a perfect player for our team because he's also capable of getting assists. He is left-footed. So we're going to put him onto that left-hand side. And then Moniz is going to play as the right-sided uh, right striker. Gondu comes in with low pace, but very good shooting, very good physicality, six foot two tall. 
he is going to be the man next to Muniz. As much better passing as well. So as I said, he could be capable of pull, uh, putting the ball across to his teammate. And it is going to be fun because we have a Brazilian partnering up with an Argentinian up top. What else do you want? And we have changed formation. Yes, I will be playing without wingers. We are going to be dropping the wingers and going into a 4-1-2-1-2 because I feel like we can actually make some really nice progress with this formation. And I'm going to be looking for another center midfielder to bring in into that left center midfield position. And then we're going to kickstart the season. I have given up. Zafiris is a player that I've seen so many times and I've never brought him into my teams. But now it's time. Christos Zafiris is a player from Slavia Praha. This man is Norwegian, but I assume he has some Greek in him. And he is walking straight into this team. He is one of those players that gets suggested to you in the comments down below a million times. Because people have used this guy and I feel like he's such a hidden gem. And now he's going to be our hidden gem. He actually is because he has such well-balanced stats for a center midfielder. 77 pace, decent shooting, good passing, great dribbling, 77 physicality. Along with 4 star, 4 star, rapid play style and... He's five foot eight, which probably should make him an extremely well-rounded player in terms of like dribbling. I think he's going to be amazing with that. And now that we have Palinia as a six, I wanted my center midfielder that comes into this team to be someone that can dribble past people. And I feel like that's the ideal choice. And he even could play in that camp position, but that's it for now. Let's see how season one goes. Unless I sell on any key players, which I don't think is going to happen. That's how the team is going to be. For the first season, we actually ended up in that 11th position that I think I showed you Chelsea be in in real life as well. So it pretty much shows that we haven't necessarily decreased the strength. We've kept things up. Manchester United in 14th. What the hell happened there? That is a really odd one. Everton in 8th. Okay. Aston Villa in 1st. All right, bro. This, this season is a mad one. Let's go ahead and take a look at our team right now. Gondu on a 79. Muniz on a 74. Jimenez was sold halfway through the season, just so you know. And we are looking at Pereira, 78. Zaferis, the new man on a 78 as well. Palinha looking solid as ever. I probably will keep him for as long as I can. But once he's like 31, I probably will sell him on. Because I think we can make a lot of cash through Palinha. And he is... The most rumored player to move away anyways but ada has gone up to a 79 bassi on a 77 former ajax player anthony robinson 79 i think that's only a plus one and then we have leno right here who has been called up to the german national team as the third goalkeeper now at the age of 32 so definitely a position that we will have to take care of as we go into the future now pereira with the most goals and assists pretty impressive Gondu 11 and 2, Muniz 6 goals and 1 assist. He only started once the second half of the season began. So him getting a plus 4 right there is a good thing. And uh, Zaferis, our new man with 9 goal contributions for himself. Only 21 years old. Good stuff. Possibly the most informed team in Europe right now has to be Bay Leverkusen. I think we all agree on that. And right now, this man is their backup goalkeeper. Matej Kovar, the Czech Republic goalkeeper, is going straight into our team right now to replace Bernd Leno. And if I'm not mistaken, Bernd Leno initially did play for Bay Leverkusen. So this makes a lot of sense. He comes in now at a young age. He is 24 years old, 6 foot 5. In the last game, he did make an error here and there. But still, he is now going to be the main goalkeeper for our team and build alongside the rest of them because his rating is right alongside them as well. I think that's a really, really good signing. Now, going into the centre-back position, I have sold a couple of players. Like I can show you right now, as we have gone into this new season, I have made a couple of changes to the squad that I feel like were necessary. We have let go of anyone that was a winger or didn't have any place in this team. So you can see Vobi, Adama Traore, Mbabu, Reed, all these guys have left. Either they were in positions that we didn't need or they were players that uh, requested a transfer like Reed himself. But I do have a big chunk of money. And at this stage, I wonder what to go for. Now, Lukic, 27-year-old center midfielder, 
I feel like that's the next spot that I want to spend on. And in terms of spending, we do have around how much? 123 million. Come on, let's do something fun. I have been seeing so many issues with Chelsea's financial fair play, how many losses they have made, and the fact that they might need to be might be forced to go ahead and sell Conor Gallagher. Their fans are putting up banners saying, if you sell him, we're going to riot. But it seems like it is possibly the most likely outcome. His contract, I believe, is running out at some point next season. This summer is where most people expect him to go. And you know what? I felt like I need that beast in my team. Conor Gallagher is an amazing player and he could take our team to that next level. Lukic is gone. Conor Gallagher is here and he will be my captain. Yes, I will give him the captaincy. Palinia, I'm sorry, pal. I love you. But at some point you will be gone. And Conor Gallagher will be here until the end of this freaking video. He's such a beast, man. Honestly, I love this guy. He is such a, like, a player that you just enjoy watching. You know, someone that can come up with crazy stuff at any point in time. And a very, very hardworking one as well. Which is something I like to see on the pitch. Conor Gallagher, you're perfect for this team. Oh, and by the way, I am fully aware that Fulham and Chelsea are massive rivals. But hey. I had the money, I paid it to Chelsea fans. Unlucky, he's a Fulham player now. We have a little bit of progress at the end of our second season right here. 59 points on Fulham. Manchester City back at the top of Premier League football. And things have gone kind of back to normal as United have gone into that third position. But lads, I am seeing lots of decent progress in this team. And I, I love the fact that people are fuming that we have Gallagher in here. I mean... Rocha was a Chelsea player and he was loaned out to Fulham. So surely the rivalry isn't as bad seemingly. But hey, here we have Gallagher on that 85 rating. Muniz 79, Gondu 82. He is the higher rated striker. And it seems like we have worked a lot on his pace. He now has 82. I believe he started with 68. Pereira looking solid, but I am willing to replace him with a massive signing in the next season. And the same goes for Palinia. I think we need to move on. I think everyone is aware that this man is due a transfer, a big money transfer that will support Fulham in the future. So let's make that happen. And then in defense, we actually look solid, but I would like to have a new right back in here as well. So yeah, good stuff. Kovar gone up to an 80. That's a decent one. But a new right back, a new CDM, and a new center attacking midfielder to join us in the next season. But we will probably have even more money to spend Gondu 20 and 5, Pereira still another really good season there. Muniz 12 and 3, doubled up his goal tally, I believe, there. Conor Gallagher 7 and 6 in his first season from centre midfield. And Zaferis with 12 assists, which is impressive. On to season 3. A lot of time has passed since this young man left Fulham to join Liverpool. And now it's time to return and be the main man, Harvey Elliott. It's actually insane that he's only like 20, 21 years old because I feel like the guy has been playing for what, six years? He started off extremely young in the starting uh, team for Fulham or the top, the first team for Fulham, I should say, and then made that move to Liverpool. And now the boy is returning to take over and be the main man. With an 81 rating, he is coming in. Pace, dribbling, four star, four star, Inesha, Flair, Trivella, all of that is part of his game. And he's only 22 as he joins us. Conor Gallagher and then Elliot in front of him. That looks very good to me. Palinha has been sold. Uh, the Pereira has been sold. And also Castagna, as you can see. And our budget this season is around 215 million. Ruben Amorim, the coach of sporting that has been linked to Liverpool, has brought in this man. Morten Hjulmand is now a player of, pa of Palinia, of Fulham. He is going to be the Palinia replacement for us. And I'm very excited about that. It's a Danish CDM, 43.4 million I paid for him. And he comes in straight away into that position. Again, not lots of pace, but immense amount of physicality. 85 physical, intercept and relentless on this man. He's right footed, six foot one tall and just pretty much perfect for the style of play that we are trying to implement into this team. He's going to have to help the defensive back line, uh, the back line basically most of the time. And that is his job. He doesn't have to move forward, but he can. He has really good passing on him and even decent dribbling. 
So he's capable of doing that. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this season, he would have a couple of goal contributions. Disrespected at Bayern Munich and used as a rotational player most of the time at Bayer Leverkusen. But whenever he steps onto the pitch, he is incredible. Josip Stanisic is now here and he has found a home for himself where he is going to be one of the main players in the squad. As a right back with decent amounts of pace, but most importantly, good defending. I will rely on Stanisic to do wonders for this team. Comes in at a perfect age of 25 as well. Still has plenty of room to grow and basically grow into this team. I mean, Muniz is the lowest rated player with 79. After that, it is Stanisic, but I trust him. And honestly, I absolutely love the look of this team. We do have Conor Gallagher in here, who is like a high potential, high profile player. I completely get that. But I feel like we brought in some quality players into this squad that I wouldn't normally buy into another rebuild. So I'm very happy with this squad right now. And now I just want to see it work. Fifth this season at the end with 68 points. Not too bad from the lads at Fulham. I'm very impressed with that, leaving behind teams like Newcastle United and Chelsea. So let's take a look at the team that has done it. Our Argentinian striker is at an 86 rating, looking ridiculous in most of his stats at this stage. Muniz coming up with an 83 for himself, continuing the good run of form. And Harvey Elliott up to an 86. Same rating as Gallagher. That is immense. His return to Fulham has seemingly worked really well for him. Zaferis up to an 85. Hulman 86 rated. I believe Palina left us around that rating as well. Stanisic up to an 83. Not insane amounts of growth, but good enough for his first season. Ada and Bassi looking solid. And then Robinson on that 85. Kovar on an 82. He's six foot five, by the way. In the upcoming season, though, I definitely have to focus on bringing in a couple of decent backup players into this team because Stansfield and Harris, potentially the only decent looking ones here. And we need to do a little bit of a better job for the bench, which is something a lot of you guys have been asking for in the last rebuild. So let's see how we're looking in terms of goals. Gondu with 19 and 11, Muni 17 and 1, Conor Gallagher with 20 goal contributions, Safiris with 19, Harvey Elliott with 16. I do expect a little bit more in the upcoming season, but then again, he has grown really nicely, so I cannot complain. That's we also did something special. Let me show you right here. We have won the FA Cup, which makes it the first trophy out of five that I have to win as a bare minimum at my time here at Fulham. So we have won the first one in a final against Manchester United and the Carabao Cup. We were not part of it, so all good. One trophy won so far. I want more! So to finally make everyone happy, I've gone out there and I've brought in a bunch of players into our team. Take a look at that. Terraz is coming in as a centre midfielder. We do have two centre midfield positions that need backups. And Terraz is going to be an amazing one. Then for the CDM spot for Hulmand, we have Shotar coming in. 30 million paid for him. For the centre back position, I brought in Gaston Alvarez from Getafe. One of the toughest teams to play against i think a lot of teams absolutely hate playing against them and then you also have lotomba right back slash slash left back as well who will be providing those fullback positions with help if needed so now we have stansfield for striker harris for the camp position terat shotar lotomba alvarez and rodak as the backups i do feel like we're looking much stronger now and maybe we can win that European trophy that we're taking part in. We nearly grabbed on to another trophy as Fulham ended two points behind Manchester City, which showcases this team has developed in a very, very good way. I mean, again, I can't believe I haven't rebuilt this team before. Why did I have just one video on Fulham in all my years? Makes no sense. Uh, Community Shield... We have won that one against Man City. I'll count that. That's two trophies. FA Cup. Yes, FA Cup has been won as well. That makes it three. Um, I think we were part of Europa League. Europa League has been secured as well. That's four. Lads, 
we have picked up four trophies that is beautiful that is immense actually so let's say we have picked up a small treble which i appreciate a lot and i hope you do too so our argentinian striker is on an 89 by now he is so ready to take on the world. Muniz on an 86. We have Elliot on an 88 alongside Gallagher. We have Hulmant on an 89. Zafir is looking incredible there with his stats. Anthony Robinson now 29 years old, enjoying life at Fulham. Bassi and Ada are looking solid as well. Stanisic 86, Kovar 87. And the bench has been improved and it surely helped. So yes, you guys are right. Every time you say I should be buying backup players, you are right. But sometimes I just don't do it. I don't know what it is. But we are looking at Gondu with 35 and 6. Muniz 27 and 5. That is definitely the best season for both our strikers. With Harvey Elliott doing really well, Anthony Robinson with 17 goal contributions from left back is outrageous. And then the rest of the team, including the midfielders, especially Hulman as well, have done really, really well. So, having seen all that, I want a Premier League trophy. And we are playing Champions League football. We are still competing for multiple trophies as we speak, but Arsenal could kick us out, but they don't. Nottingham Forest losing the cup semi-finals against Real Madrid. That's the end, isn't it? That is not the end. 8-7 on penalties. Ridiculous. Final against Manchester United. It's a 2-1 victory. Lads, this team might have pulled it off. I don't think it has actually pulled off the Premier League title. We have too many draws, I believe. But let's take a look at it real quick before we look into Bayer Leverkusen again, who seem to be my opponent in the Champions League very often now. Arsenal have won it. Community Shield belongs to Fulham again. FA Cup belongs to Fulham. Obviously, we saw that happen. Carabao Cup, that we couldn't get. Now, we could be winning the FA Cup and also the Champions League, and we could be doing it with this team right here. Gondu with the 92 is the highest rated player in our team. After him, it's Elliot with a 91. It's Robinson with a 91 and also Schulmant. Then it is Conor Gallagher with the 90 and the rest of the team is below his rating. But no one is below the 87, which is good enough. Other on an, uh, He's like 87 and he's 30 years old and the bench looks very, very solid as well. I'm actually mad excited about this game because... I want to play the 4 one 2 one 2 Back in the day when I used to play Ultimate Team, the 4 one 2 one 2 was the go-to go formation for everyone. I think it was like FIFA 17, 18, up to 19. It was such a sick formation. You could play great passing play in there. So I cannot wait to see what happens right here. The center midfielders are like the most important position in this formation to carry the ball forward. But let's see how that goes in a bit. We have Gondo with 42 and 6, Muniz with 26 goal contributions, Harvey Elliott possibly having his best season right on time. That is very, very good. And now this Fulham side that so far had only a third division trophy and a second division trophy, have won the FA Cup multiple times, have gotten the Community Shield. I know it's not a massive trophy, but now we can get the Champions League and that will be against Maya Leverkusen. And Leverkusen are coming in with Hoylund, Tel Taremi, Molero, Vietz, Puerta, Diao, Saliba, Mbamba, Kwanza, Costa. Bro, that team is nuts. That is such a good team. It actually scares me. Yeah, I might actually get beaten by this. It is finally time to step onto the pitch with Fulham. I wonder if this formation can help me beat this incredible side. But most importantly, I want to get another trophy. Nice pass. Off we go. Passing play is going to be key. And the thing that I kind of like about this formation as well is your fullbacks are quite attacking. Gondo. Yes. Straight away, the Argentinian gets the lead for Fulham. It's 1-0. Building up down the right with the likes of Conor Gallagher and then pushing into the middle at the right moment. Muniz with the pass into Harvey Elliott who returns to Fulham and Gondu who's smashing it in Argentina now lined up for this side as well. Shoots into that top right corner. No chance for their goalkeeper, especially if you consider that we actually did buy their goalkeeper and right back. This Leverkusen side might be missing them. Anthony Robinson getting blocked off by Taremi. Still getting blocked off by Taremi. Somehow giving away a foul there, apparently. What the? Yes, Kovar. 
huge save. 1v1. That is a big mistake from Leverkusen. Bolero, the Las Palmas talent. Here he goes. This is a dangerous one for us. We need to stop him. No, I cannot stop him. But Ada can do it for me. Lovely. Harvey gets the ball back. Muniz. Muniz making that run. Gondu finds him. Gondu, as I said, he does have the ability to find his teammates. And that was a ridiculous shot from Muniz. Zaferis with the cross. Bassi in the air. And he nearly pulled it off. Yes, Ada. Big steal. Right during the buildup of our opponents. And off we go with Muniz into Harvey Elliott. Harvey sees the run off Zaferis. The Greek Norwegian makes it 2 0 before half time. Zaferis, let's go, buddy. What a finish. Now, the build up was class. It started off with a defensive move that really caught our opponents off guard. They did not know how to transition back into defense as Zaferis knew. This was his chance to write his name into the stars. And that's exactly what he did right here. This Bayer Leverkusen team isn't as scary as I thought. Oh, that was a bad tackle for me. Could have easily gotten a yellow for that. They're inside the box. This is dangerous stuff. Huge. Kavar just intercepts the pass with a flying save. I love that, buddy. Passi out of position. Ref, what? Don't you dare give it what what are you giving him a rent for i have my left back right there anthony robinson is right next to him you can't be giving him a rent for that are you joking what a ridiculous decision julmant will drop into seat uh, into center back right now and i'll have conor gallagher drop into cdm what a joke man this ref that's not a red. Who's going to take this free kick? Oh, not him. It's going to be number 23. No, it is not. They are going again and they are failing. Too much space. Too much space. But there is always one man to throw his body in between. Is that mine? Keep us out. Go on. Yes, please. Go in. Go in. Yes. No, it's slowing down too much. Come on, man. <laughs> that would have been something right there. Uh-oh. Oh, no. A clean sheet is wanted, but it is not given. It is their Hoyland scoring, but it is already done. That's two minutes into extra time, even though it was one minute given, or added time, I should say. And there the ref blows the whistle. They cannot get that trophy out of our hands. And how bad is that? Conor Gallagher. A Chelsea player is going to be lifting the trophy for Fulham. We live for moments like these. Guys, we created an amazing team. I had tons of fun rebuilding Fulham for the second time in all my years of making content on career mode. I mean, this was necessary and honestly, it was a ton of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I'm wishing every one of you a beautiful day. Take care and peace.